Hey lovelies, it's Sunder from Substance Over Style and welcome to a new video. So we did another little poll on my Insta stories, which I love and thank you so much to everybody who asked amazing questions, like always, I'm definitely gonna make it a weekly thing. Um, so I got, I got the question, it gives me really, really good ideas for these videos as well. So Elliot Saxby asked me, um, a really good question, which I thought would be the good topic of today's video. So he asked me, after you achieve divine union with yourself, after activating your Hieros Yamos template, how has that affected your um, attitude towards relationships and sex? Now, firstly, I'm going to say that I see Hieros Yamos as a journey rather than a destination. Um, I'm aware that other people might see it differently, that's fine, you know, people can think whatever they like, but I just, I see it more as a path. Um, and the reason why is because as human beings, like we're not God, right, we're human beings. So at different times and at different moments, we're always gonna be operating out of, you know, sometimes I'm gonna be more in my feminine energy more, and sometimes I'm gonna be in my masculine energy more. But high risk Gamos is about unifying the masculine and the feminine together in sacred union. Now you always ideally want to have the energy somewhat unified so that even if you are operating more in your feminine energy, you still have your masculine energy in place as the structure or the architecture that holds your feminine up. If you don't have that in place, then your feminine energy is gonna be in wounded feminine energy. So she's not gonna feel safe. She's not gonna, um, even if she's feeling her emotions, right? She's in her emotions, she's in her feelings. She's not gonna have the courage, because that's a masculine principle, to speak her truth and ask for her needs to be met and honored. She's just gonna have an emotional meltdown and maybe like a tantrum or whatever. That's more of like the wounded feminine. Um, same with if you're in your masculine energy, like if a man or even a woman is in their masculine energy, if they don't have the feminine embodied and in place, um, to direct the masculine in the right direction, to steer the masculine in the right direction, because the feminine is the oracle, right? Um, she is the conscience. Um, she's the principle of care. So she will direct the masculine into the right direction because she indicates what we should be caring about. Um, if that's not in the right place and the masculine he doesn't know which direction to go in, he's completely directionless, he has no honour, he has no integrity, he has no moral compass. Um, so both of them do need to be integrated. Um, so yeah, I would say that I'm had to hydrate. Yeah, so I have activated the hierogamic template um, did the wings activation with my mentor Emily Harris we did that um, a few weeks ago and then there's also a high risk activation in my course reclaim your crown combined with Kriya yoga it's a very powerful activation I recommend all of you sign up for it if you want that activation and obviously the entire course helps you peel and balance your internal polarities to, to come into union with yourself um, so it's not just about that singular activation it's the entire um, 10 step course that will help you balance the energies and, and heal all the traumas that are in your light body that are causing you to become polarized into wounded masculine or wounded feminine Okay, so how has it changed my attitudes, or rather healed my attitudes towards relationships and sex, just in every way, in every way possible and in all the best ways? The thing is, when you erect your own inner masculine as a woman, you stop externalizing your masculine to you know men outside of you. You just connect with the immortal masculine, which is the masculine principle of God. Um, and that becomes your beloved. That is the true beloved. The true beloved is God. Now, what happens when that happens? A very, very powerful thing happens when, when, when you do that, when you go on this journey. When you go become in communion with God, with the masculine principle of God, and he covers you, he protects you, he is your provision, he is your support, um, you start to resonate at that frequency of the king, the higher king, the immortal masculine. 
your oh, any man that wants to meet you in union who wants to be your beloved who wants to be your partner has to meet you there he has to meet you at that higher level. So you're no longer playing with the lower masculine. He cannot get to you. He cannot touch you. He is no longer a match for where you are at now. You're now here. You, you don't even find him attractive anymore. This is the thing. You become extremely magnetic to the higher masculine, to the divine masculine, to a man that is also in relationship with God or with goddess. He has he has resurrected his inner queen. He has got in touch with his inner feminine. So he is able to honor you in that way because he respects the feminine because he respects his own internal feminine. So he's balanced and integrated as well. That's who you become a match to. You become mirrors for each other. So when he honors his emotions and you know his it makes time for self-care and he basically has uh not suppressed his own feminine qualities he doesn't try and suppress your feminine qualities he can hold space for your feminine qualities he's not in his feminine he's gone beyond that a man needs to go through the process of connecting with his, his emotions and uh, with his feminine energy you don't ideally want to be dating a guy when he's in that process, you know, unless both of you are trying to heal together. Um, that can be a little bit of an uncomfortable process because he's much more in his feminine energy. So he wants his emotions cherished. He wants you to hold space for his emotional storm. He wants to, you to provide for him. You know, he wants you to protect him. He, and it becomes a gender role reversal and that can be very unhealthy because now you're running on your masculine energy and that will deplete you or throw your hormones out. It's not, it's not a good place that you want to say stay stuck. But it is a necessary part of the healing journey that we will flip from one to the other. Um, you know, as a woman is healing her wounded feminine, she will, you know, she, she needs to, you know, start to develop her masculine energy and sometimes she flips, you know, in, in the opposite, in an equal and opposite direction according to the principle of rhythm until she then comes back into balance. Um, so if you meet a man once he's gone through that process and he's learned to honor his feminine side, then, but now he knows he's integrated and he knows how to be in his masculine energy, then he honors you as the feminine um, partner, the, the feminine in the relationship. So, you know, the, the both of you know how to polarize into masculine and feminine, but you also know how to be integrated when, when it's needed. Um, so, you know, as a woman, you have to have courage, you have to have boundaries, you have to be able to speak your truth. As a man, you m need to be in touch with your emotions and things like that. Um, so it form it, you just have much healthier relationships. You don't like you don't tolerate any stupid nonsense anymore. Like the, your relationships become free from abuse. You don't tolerate toxicity. You can understand that your partner is still a work in progress because it's not about being perfect. It's about also having compassion when your partner, you know, you know, does things that are maybe slightly out of integrity. You don't just go, oh, look, you're not healed enough. Well, I'm too good for this, so I'm gonna go over there. No, you hold space for that process. That, but the partner has to have the self-awareness to recognize when they are being out of integrity or when they have wounds and triggers that come up, um, that, 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 that they can recognize that this is some childhood shit or this is like some abandonment stuff that isn't to do with you but that you're triggering the, within them. They need to be able to communicate that they're having something come up um, that isn't about you but you know, and that they're working on. So they, they, the relationship just becomes much more conscious. It becomes, the communication becomes much more conscious. It becomes more, you know, respectful. Um, and sex, when it comes to sex as well, it's just a much more safer, more sealed container because both of you have understood the power of your sexual energy. Your sexual energy is what connects you to the immortal, to the divine, to God, and it needs to flow upwards. So you're not leaking it out 
everywhere. You're not sharing it with people that don't match that same frequency that you're on. So, you know, when you're in union with God, you're only going to share your sexual energy with your beloved, with somebody that you genuinely love, because you know that sexual energy is divine energy, is kundalini energy. Sexual intimacy is an expression of emotional intimacy. It's a physical manifestation of love. That's why we call it making love. So it's not, you know, a tool that you use to manipulate people. It's not a thing that you use to try and get stuff from the masculine. Uh, you know, the man is not looking to feed on other women's sexual energy to bolster his status and his ego that, that that stuff just doesn't happen anymore because both of you have sealed your sexual energy and you're moving it upwards in the direction of God in the direction of your creative gifts your mission so what happens and we do this in the career course we move the sexual energy upwards into the heart and when it's in the heart then we open up the channels of giving and receiving so we share our creative energy with the world and so no, you can't be sharing that sexual energy with somebody who isn't your beloved because then that siphons your energy and then you that takes away from your mission because that's what the energy is for it's for your mission it's for your 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 divine mission on this planet and your partner is the person that helps you bring that mission into being. The, the, the masculine and feminine in union is the most powerful manifestation template, okay? Because it's about, you know, visualizing what you wanna create in the world, the creativity, which is the sexual energy, which is a feminine, the Shakti energy, and then action in the world, which is the divine masculine principle. So she steers and then he, to, puts things into action and this happens not just not within each partner but also within the unit the couple so that is the um that's the staff and rod union um not everyone is coded for staff and rod unions um but i think a lot of people especially who are on this path will be um so yeah it really it changes everything yeah, so I invite you to join the program, Reclaim Your Crown. I'll be announcing on Instagram when it has launched. Um, wh whenever it's launched, I'll put, also put a link in the description box below of the video. Um, and, yep, yeah, is that all I wanted to say? Yes, and if you want to book a session with me, um, a field work session to work on any kind of traumas or any kind of patterns that are coming up in your relationships that you want to heal, we use this same frequency. We use hierogamic energy um, and different grail kings and grail queens um, in the quantum field to actually like heal and collapse out traumas and false timelines and things like that. Um, so if you're interested in that, then you can book a session with me. You can message me on Instagram. Um, and we can work together. I would love to assist you. If you want to suggest a video, then you can suggest one in the comment box below or DM me on Instagram if you want to remain anonymous. So yeah, that was a really great question from Elliot. Thank you so much for asking that. And I will see you in the next video. Peace out, soul fam. One love.